Today I'm going to show you how to make four delicious looking dishes that are actually really good and healthy for you. And the catch is, all of them are 100 pesos or less per portion. <laughs> There are a couple of excuses that people have when it comes to healthy eating, and I get it. Sometimes there is some knowledge and some technique that is needed to be able to kind of debunk those myths and those excuses. Probably the most common one is that it's too expensive to eat healthy food. So that's why I really wanted to do this video today to show you that with very basic ingredients that we can find in our palenques and in our supermarkets at the lower price range, you can do food that looks so beautiful, so tasty, so vibrant, and something that will fill you up. It's very important to note that when you are being healthy, being able to make these kinds of dishes on the fly is so important because it won't demotivate you when you don't have good food. Oh no, I don't have any vegetables in my fridge. Okay, cool, I'm just gonna buy a burger. That's kind of like the thought process we have. Once there's a challenge between us, level floor, and the first step, when that first step becomes slightly more difficult, people don't wanna take that first step. So today I wanna show you those recipes that are fast, really tasty, and use ingredients that when put together and when costed out will come out to 100 pesos, which is $2 US or less per portion. Now these are all kind of just frameworks. Feel free to tweak them based on your own personal preferences and tastes. The first dish I'm gonna show you how to make is so pretty, I love looking at it. Kangkong is something that is grown literally like a weed everywhere in any stagnant body of water, fresh water. And it is actually really nutritious and when cooked properly, it's really tasty. So I'm gonna show you how to pair that with some sardines. This is probably the cheapest meal we have today on our list. What I wanna achieve here is kind of like steamed gailan and then they add some oyster sauce and just some oil. It's really beautiful and it's really pretty. We're gonna do exactly the same thing. So you're gonna cut up your bunches of kang kong, separating the thicker kind of stemmy parts and the leaves. We're gonna blanch both, but at different times to make sure that we don't overcook them. Once that is fully blanched, that then goes into a pan just to give it a little color and some caramelization with the oyster sauce, some garlic, and other aromatics. Fish all that out, place that on a plate. Then we're gonna to toss in our sardines. I always like using sardines in oil because you can add more flavor to that. And you're gonna fry them for a little bit, chop it up, add in some chili garlic, mix it all together, and then top one with the other. This looks really pretty to me, and, and I think good looking food plays a huge part in kind of sticking to our goals. Let's try this, mix it a little bit. The boiling of the kang kong before frying it, for me, is an essential part. You really get nice tender stems, and you don't get overcooked or dry pieces that you get if you were just to fry it straight in the pan. This is so good. Ginataan is probably one of the most commonly used techniques in cooking in the Philippines and it's something that I wish people would spend a little more time on in terms of elevating it. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make like a very simple chicken and squash and sitao ginatan, because uh, I think it's a combination that works really well. It's not too expensive and it's also really nice and filling. Very simple, we're gonna start off by mincing some ginger, some garlic, and some onions, kind of like our Filipino holy trinity. Then prep your vegetables, so just some squash and some sitao that we're gonna cut so it cooks slightly faster. To bring more flavor to the dish, I do want to sear my chicken first. We're using tiny chicken legs that are not very expensive from the palenque. We're going to brown that on all sides, give it an opportunity for those natural fats to come out. And toss in our garlic, ginger, and onions. For me, it's really important to get some beautiful coloration on the ginger. It really makes such a difference in terms of flavor. We're going to add some squash, dry fry that for a little bit before covering everything. You could add some chicken broth if you want, if you want that flavor to be more intense. We're just gonna stick to water for now. You want that to evaporate just really nice and gently and then softly cook the squash before we come to a consistency that we're happy with and we toss in our sitao or long beans. Now cook those very quickly. They will cook within the next five minutes. So up to you in terms of texture, how far you wanna bring it. Add in your coconut milk. And again, we're gonna simmer this slowly until you start seeing some natural fat 
kind of seep out of that coconut milk. And you'll get kind of like a sauce. It's not too thick, but also not too liquidy. Only at this point will I use the main seasoning, which is just a tad bit of fish sauce because I didn't want to overpower it before. When everything's ready, just plate that and then serve it with some rice if you prefer. When I eat ginataan, this is what I like to do. I like to take my squash and kind of like squash that, no pun intended, with the rice, um, and then just hydrate it with the sauce. It's a type of meal for me that I kind of like mushing everything together. I just feel like it's more tasty. Let's give that a try. Simple, beautiful, and so tasty, and honestly, when I have foreign friends that come to the Philippines, ginata on anything is probably one of their favorites because they love coconut milk. It feels very exotic to them. It's like a blank canvas. So I feel like people should eat more ginata on and kind of just get more creative with it. Mung beans are so versatile, but we tend to use it in only two ways in the Philippines, guisado and ginata mungo. It's a bean that can be used in all the ways that beans are used all over the world. You can make a mungo hummus, mungo soup, probably mungo bread and mungo desserts. There's so many applications to it. So in mungo, I'm gonna make kind of like a split pea soup-ish thing. Very important here, if you are doing kind of like any type of recipe where you want the mungo to hold its shape, you're gonna need to soak that overnight so that when you cook it, you don't cook it too long and it doesn't disintegrate. Here, we don't really care because we're gonna be blending everything together. So put some mungo with some water um, to boil and then just really cook the hell out of it until it's really mushy. So really simple, what we're gonna do is fry off first the ginger, garlic, and onion. Then we're gonna toss in all the greens until everything just smells really beautiful and you'll see that color change from regular green to super vibrant green. Then we're gonna fish out our mungo that's fully cooked and add that to the pot, stir everything together, and then add some water to just get everything nicely going and boiling. At this point, you can already taste the soup and kind of add some things if you need to. I would recommend seasoning this with some fish sauce, but you can also use some soy sauce, you can use some salt, really up to you. All that goes into the blender. At first, it'll look really murky, but then all of a sudden, those beautiful vibrant colors from all the vegetables will really come through nicely. And this is really hot at this point. So you can still add some coriander leaves and spring onions if you want even more intense green color. But once you blend it, you'll see this beautiful color that actually looks like a split pea soup. All that goes into the bowl, make sure you taste it to season it more, then finish everything with a little bit of coconut milk to make it look pretty. You can also add a little bit of olive oil if you want some texture. This is a personal preference. Salt, pepper, good to go. I love how kind of like beautiful this looks and it looks like a really expensive dish, but it's, it's literally mungo and a bunch of herbs that you can find in your neighborhood market or palenque. It looks like a pea soup, but when you taste it, it has more earthiness, it has more body, it has more flavor. It's something that if I finish this bowl, it's gonna fill me up completely. It's not one of those soups that, it's like an appetizer. This soup could be a meal, and I'm a big fan of soups as meals. Tofu is one of those ingredients, if you don't know how to cook it, it sucks. You really need to bring flavor to it. You need sauce, you need texture, you need all these things for it to be good. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a perfect crispy tofu, and then we'll add some greens to that. First thing we wanna do is draw out as much moisture as possible from the tofu block. So make sure you get extra firm tofu, and then as an extra step when it gets home, wrap it up in some towel, and then we're gonna add like a cast iron pan or something on it and for 30 minutes, we're just gonna let that water seep out. Right before cooking, you're also gonna pat it dry. This then gets cubed up. I really like big, chunky pieces, so I'm gonna make mine quite big. And then you're gonna toss that in some cornstarch, making sure that it's really nicely covered. For a quick little sauce, we're gonna mix together some oyster sauce, some soy sauce, some sugar, some chili garlic sauce, and a little bit of water, just to solve all that together then get your oil hot in a pan, and then we're gonna cook the piece of tofu for about two to three minutes per side on medium heat until every single side is perfectly brown and crispy. When your tofu is pretty much where you want it to be, go ahead and discard the excess oil, and then very quickly toss your sauce inside. You don't want this to burn, so really shake things up quite quickly and get it straight off the fire so that you retain that crispy edge, but then your sauce is also sticking to the tofu. 
Next, you can use any green you want. I'm gonna be using some pet chai. Then gonna boil this for about a minute in some really hot water seasoned with some salt. Then you're gonna fish it out. Don't need to cook this any further. Put that on a plate, dress it with whatever extra sauce you have left, and then put the tofu on top and why not finish with some really beautiful crunchy garlic. I love big, chunky pieces of tofu. And when every side of the tofu is perfectly cooked, it just makes me so happy. So next time you cook, be an inventor, be innovative, like try out different things, and maybe you're the one that's gonna write the recipe that generations to come will follow. And that's where you wanna be. If you're cooking at home, you're cooking for yourself. Who cares about everyone else? So just make something you enjoy eating. Mm -hmm.